There was a time when farmers didn't rely on fertilizers, compost bins, or packaged soil enhancers, yet their fields produced harvests that stunned even the toughest conditions, lush crops, strong roots, and dark living soil that seemed immune to drought or disease. The secret wasn't chemical or commercial. It was a simple but controversial technique used across Europe and early America in the 1800s. It was eventually banned in certain regions for being, well, unsanitary. Yet the results were so extraordinary that a few old-world gardeners kept it alive in secret. The method? Fermented soil bedding, an ancient microbial accelerator that turns raw organic matter into humus faster than compost ever could. The forgotten method that fed entire villages. In the 1800s, small farming communities used a practice now known as soil fermentation, though at the time it went by names like night soil bedding or field rot layering. Instead of composting materials above ground, they buried organic waste directly into shallow trenches, layering it with a special microbial starter that was typically animal bedding mixed with wood ash, straw, and milkway. The mixture fermented underground for weeks, generating microbial heat and oxygen exchange that built humus right in the soil. This method was banned in the early 1900s when the use of raw organic waste was discouraged due to sanitation fears. But the science behind it is now being rediscovered. When properly managed, it produces a living soil that outperforms both compost piles and synthetic fertilizers because it accelerates microbial succession, the very process that transforms dead material into fertile life. So, the real reason this trick outperforms compost is actually pretty interesting. Composting above ground relies on heat and turning, which means most of the microbial energy is spent on breaking material down into a uniform texture. While this creates nutrient-rich humus, it takes time and, honestly, often loses much of the carbon and nitrogen as gases. In contrast, fermented soil bedding locks those elements underground, where microbes can convert them directly into stable organic matter without excessive heat loss. The underground environment, well, it remains moist, shaded and buffered against temperature swings. This encourages anaerobic and facultative microbes, the kind responsible for lactic acid fermentation, to dominate early, breaking complex materials down quickly while suppressing pathogens. As oxygen slowly seeps back in, aerobic microbes take over, completing the transformation into stable, nutrient-dense humus. The result is a soil that not only feeds plants, but actually becomes alive with beneficial bacteria, actinomycetes, and fungi. Now, let's talk about how to safely use the method in modern gardens. The modern adaptation of this banned soil trick no longer involves unsafe materials. Instead, it can be replicated with completely safe and organic inputs. The process begins with a fermentation trench dug about 8 to 10 inches deep and roughly a foot wide. In this trench, gardeners layer organic material in three repeating stages. The first layer should be dry carbon, materials like shredded leaves, paper, or straw, roughly 2 inches thick. The second layer is nitrogen-rich matter such as vegetable scraps, overripe fruits, or green weeds, about 1 inch thick. The third and most crucial layer is the microbial activator, which in the old method came from fermented animal bedding, but can now be made by mixing one part molasses, one part milk or yogurt whey, and ten parts water. This mixture is poured over the trench to moisten it lightly, encouraging the growth of lactic acid bacteria. Then, you just cover the trench with a final two-inch layer of soil and let it rest. Within 10 to 14 days, the materials will begin to collapse and ferment, generating mild heat. In 30 to 45 days, the trench will transform into a nutrient-charged strip of soil that feels spongy and dark. This process can be repeated between planting rows or under future garden beds to build long-term fertility. Why do microbes respond faster to fermentation than compost? Well, fermentation wakes up microbial life instantly because it provides both food and an oxygen-limited environment where certain bacteria thrive. These bacteria, particularly species of lactobacillus and bacillus subtilis, produce enzymes that digest cellulose and proteins in days rather than weeks. 
The acids they generate also unlock bound minerals from plant tissues, making nutrients like calcium, potassium, and phosphorus immediately available once the soil reoxygenates. In practice, this means a fermented soil trench can feed heavy feeding crops like tomatoes or corn faster than traditional compost additions. For example, in loamy or clay-heavy soils, running one fermented trench every three feet between rows provides enough nutrient flow for an entire growing season. It also improves structure by creating soft, crumbly pockets that attract worms and enhance drainage. To apply this method effectively, aim for a carbon-to-nitrogen ratio of roughly 25 to 1 in your layered materials. Beyond the nutrients, the real magic lies in the microbial inoculation, once fermented trenches are established, they act as living reservoirs of beneficial microbes that continue to repopulate the surrounding soil. Over time, even compacted or lifeless ground begins to transform into humus, rich earth that resists erosion, retains moisture, and suppresses disease naturally. This is why farmers in the 1800s often noticed that their soil kept improving year after year without ever adding fertilizer. Modern gardeners rediscovering this approach are finding the same results. It's safer, cleaner, and more sustainable than the old band version, yet it preserves the same biological power that made it so legendary. The old secret that's new again. Every gardener chasing perfect compost should know that there's a faster path that doesn't rely on endless turning or waiting. The 1800s soil fermentation method may have been forgotten, but its principles still hold the key to microbial balance and soil longevity. Try it once, and you'll see your garden darken, soften, and spring back to life faster than you thought possible. If this guide gave you real insight into how ancient soil builders worked with nature's microbes, hit that subscribe button and share this with another serious gardener. Hydrohaven continues to dig up and revive forgotten soil wisdom, methods that built living earth long before fertilizers and machines ever existed.